This is Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the Pokemon fan game with over 170,000 possible combinations, as well as over 20,000 custom sprites made by the community. In this game, we'll battle to create fusions that are scary, weird, and downright amazing. With another community poll, you guys chose for this run to use only Evolution fusions. So no matter what Pokemon we fuse, it has to use one of the eight Evolutions. So be prepared for some absolutely amazing fusions. Comment at the end your favorite from the run. With that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Don't forget to watch through to the end for some of the coolest fusions of the run, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let's also try to reach 1,818 likes. We started this run by naming our rival Gray, since Gray is kind of boring and evolutions are colorful and exciting. And then we picked our starter Squirtle, but since this is an evolution run, we weren't really going to use it. We quickly retrieved Professor Oak's parcel, collected our Pokeballs, and headed straight to Pewter City, where our run would officially begin. Now since we are using 8 specific Pokemon as our team for this run, I wanted to make sure that we'd see as many different fusions as possible. So to do this, we're going to start our run by choosing 2 Evolutions as our starters, as Brock's gym uses 2 Pokemon. From there, every gym that we defeated would give us 1 additional Evolution. Now how do we decide which Evolutions we got? Well we'd use our nifty one of a kind Evolution wheel of... well, it's just a wheel. We're gonna spin it, it's gonna pick our evolution, and that's what we're gonna go with. With our first spin, we got Umbreon, the fan favorite. And our second spin was Jolteon, so a solid team already. With our spins out of the way, we added these two to our team, boxed our starter, and finished one last step in preparation for our run. If you go upstairs in the Poke Centers and talk to this guy in the glasses, you can randomize a lot of different things about your game. We're going to be randomizing wild encounters as much as possible and catching as many Pokemon as we can for maximum fusion possibilities. We're also going to randomize trainer teams and gym types. With that now completed, it was time to catch a bunch of Pokemon. We ended up fusing our Jolteon with this Ekans to create Ekion, and our Umbreon we fused with this Ponita to create Umbra. I love the dark red and gold flames that just fit perfectly with the black and gold body. After a little bit of training and leveling up, it was time to take on the first gym in our journey. Brock this time around was using ghost type Pokemon. We led Umbra against Mertley and after a few pursuits his big headed bird fainted. His second Pokemon Mimsy, which looked like a vacuum? I'm not really sure what Pokemon Mimikyu's fused with here, but it went down with a bite from Ekion. Regardless, we easily won our first gym badge and headed back to the Pokemon Center to spin the wheel once again and get our third evolution. Vaporeon, yes! With Vaporeon on the team, it was time to catch more Pokemon, like this adorable Turdlow, as well as a Groudon. We even somehow caught it on our fourth Pokeball. Someone do the math for me on that catch rate, it can't be high. With Groudon now in our PC, we obviously had to see what that and Vaporeon looked like, and oh my gosh, what is that? Kyogre, get out the way, there is a new king of the sea, and its name is Vaporedon. With that behemoth now on the team, we burned our way through some trainers to Mount Moon. Look at this funny Eevee fusion. As always, Team Rocket was causing trouble in the cave, so we quickly ran in, interrupted their experiment, and chased them off. To be fair, I would run too after seeing Vapor Dawn. As we continued forward, we caught this Mistrevis, which will come in a lot later, as well as some random Moltres, then suddenly encountered a rival Grey, who challenged us to another battle. Grey's Hootlith went down to Vapor Dawn, but not before somehow burning this Water Titan. So we switched into Ekion, who took out Gray's Mander with a Thundershock. Magnander then came out and survived, taking out our Ekion with Icicle Sphere. My man, why do you have so many Shelder fusions? It didn't matter too much though, as Umbra came out to finish it off, as well as their starter, Charsar, with Flame Wheel. With our rival now beaten, we trained our Pokemon up in preparation for the second gym. Our Ekion evolved and... Oh. Oh no, that won't do. Let's reverse it. Boom! Monster Hunter! Now this one is a cool Jolteon fusion. With our newly created fusion, we headed into Misty's fighting type gym. Hitmonbull posed no threat to our Aerion with a few acids, and Vaporedon faced off against Echoke. Funny we keep seeing these Eevee fusions on our Eeveelution run. With that, Misty was defeated, and it was time to add another Eeveelution to our team roster. It's time for Sylveon. We tried out Sylveon and Arcanine, but ended up keeping the Slowbro fusion instead. 
Just look at Eevee chewing on its tail instead of Shelter. We also refused our Umbreon with Haunter to make this amazing Honryon fusion, and we continued forward. We caught a few more Pokemon like this Gyarados and Cacklord? Anyways, we pushed forward to the SSN where we once again faced off against our rival Grey. Funny enough, Grey leads off this battle with an Evolution fusion of their own, Togreon. Unfortunately, Honryon is not up to the challenge and goes down to a bite. Luckily, Vaporedon comes in with an easy finish and proceeds to wipe out their starter with Ancient Power. Silvbro is then able to take down Clefficate with a combination of Draining Kiss and Confusion, and Deliodial quickly falls to a single Draining Kiss, once again beating our rival. After giving the captain a back rub, he graciously pays us by giving us the HM cut so we can make our way to the third gym. Finally, it was time to face Lieutenant Surge and his normal types. Aerion crunched down on Poriish and eventually takes it out. Surge's Stunlax also quickly goes down to several kicks, and Aerion falls asleep having done its job. We switch into Vapor Dawn to finish off Snorsley, and after waking up from a nap, we barely managed to take it out with a Water Pulse, winning our third badge. Now you know what time it is, we have a new badge, so we're spinning the wheel. We grabbed ourselves a Flareon. We fused it with Gengar, and as cool as this fusion looked, I had to keep this Mismagius fusion. Just look at this Flareon Witch. I love it. I also found one of the coolest Jolteon fusions, Octeon. We made one of the Forbidden fusions, Lopunny and Vaporeon, and briefly fused Sylveon with Mawile. With our newly fused team, we caught a few more Pokemon, including this Ho-Oh, and pushed on to Lavender Town to the Pokemon Tower, where we once again ran into Grey. Their Mewmander went down to an easy Bubble Beam from Octeon, and Vaporunny took out their Charsaur with Bounce. Bisol came out and we switched into our freaky Sylveon fusion to take it out with a fairy move, which left his final Pokemon to be taken out by Honryon. We both tried to push forward to save the recently captured Mr. Fuji, but the tower was impossible to ascend without a Sylphscope, so we left and we made our way towards Celadon City. On our way, we ran into this amazing Octillery fusion, and for those who do like anime, this one's likely a familiar character. Once arriving, we ran into Erika, and upon hearing of Mr. Fuji's capture, she ran straight to the sewers to try and stop Team Rocket. Not sure why she was going to leave a criminal organization unchecked in her city up until she found out they'd taken this man hostage, but you do you, I guess. We teamed up with her, battled our way through the grunts, and eventually made it to the end, where Erika was defeated by Giovanni. It was our turn to take him on. Leading our Flagius, we did decent damage to pull enter, so Giovanni switched into Analeep. Luckily, a few Mystical Fires took it out and Phantom Force finished off his Pulliant. Giovanni then sent out this amazing Sylveon fusion, and we quickly took it out with our own using Iron Head. Giovanni, now defeated, fled, leaving the Sylphscope behind, and Erica invited us to Challenger Gym. <clears throat> Excuse me, ma'am. We just slapped around the man that defeated you just now. You think you can beat us? The answer was yes, by the way. Very, very much yes. Our first battle with her started out with Hanryon barely being able to take out her Pidge Choke. It was then that we faced the strongest Pokemon we'd faced yet, Reshinape. With a combination of Flamethrower and Dragon Breath, Erica wiped us out not one, not two, but six times. Finally, I accepted that the three Pokemon that I was bringing were just not going to get the job done. So I switched up the team and went in again. This time, Honryon had no trouble with Pidge Choke and quickly took it out with Shadow Ball. Reshnape came out and with a Shadow Ball and Sucker Punch combination, we were able to weaken it and then switch into Flagius to finish the job. Unfortunately, we get fully paralyzed and then knocked out by Punishment. It looks like another loss. Then, Vaporunny was able to take it out with Bounce, leaving her third and final Pokemon, Beelu, to also easily fall to a Bounce. Thank you, bulky Vaporeon stats. And thanks for nothing, Erica. You could have totally solved the problem by beating Giovanni with that monster of a Pokemon. We had our fourth gym badge. It was time for a new evolution, And we spin for Espeon. After trying out some fusions that were terrible, and also amazing. I ended up sticking with this Ho-Oh fusion, Iso. I love how majestic this fusion looks. We also tried a interesting Umbreon fusion, as well as this awesome moon-themed Mega Gallade, but in the end ended up sticking with Houndoom and Umbreon for a little while. I could definitely see this being a Mega Umbreon. Finally, having seen Giovanni's Gallade Sylveon fusion, we decided to make our own with Gardevoir. 
and it looked amazing. With our newly organized and finally full team of six, we headed back to save Mr. Fuji with our newly acquired Silphscope. Once at the top, we found that Mr. Fuji didn't in fact need any help, but he gave us a Poke Flute for our journey. And with it, we were able to move this sleeping Snorlax so that Janine and I could move on to Fuchsia City. There, her father, the fifth gym leader, was waiting. Without a moment of hesitation, we jumped straight into the gym battle. Our Solvier easily took out his first Pokemon with Draining Kiss, and Octeon took out his Pori Swine with Bubble Beam. Garterra knocked us out, but then quickly fell to a Brave Bird from Iso, which left Crocaron as an easy final foe. This evolution team is no joke. With another spin, we added one of my favorite evolutions, Leafeon, to the team. This Volcarona fusion looked amazing, but so did this Arcanine one, and I ended up keeping this Tyranitar fusion for some reason. It's honestly not even my favorite of the three, but it was on our team for a little while, so oh well. I fused Vaporeon with Agron to create this monster, and we put Jolteon in the PC for now. We caught a few more Pokemon in the Safari Zone and then headed to explore Silphco, where Team Rocket was rumored to have run to. After saving everyone in the building, we pressed on to stop Giovanni, until Gray came in to challenge us again at the most inconvenient of times. Cataskull went down easily to Iso, and his Silvly Fusion was one shot by Brave Bird. You know, I'm really enjoying seeing a lot of our opponents using Evolution Fusions on this run as well. Flagius, our Fire Witch, came in and finished off Charsaur with Power Gym, and then knocked out his Ala Free with Phantom Force. Then this amazing Cosmic Fusion came out, which reminds me, some of you have been requesting for a Cosmic Fusion run, so if you know any Pokemon fusions like this Clefthorn that make cool Cosmic or Space themed fusions, comment them down below and we might just end up using them on a future run. Anyways, we switched into Silvor and Grey decided to self-destruct, which won us the battle. With our rival's assistance, we then faced Giovanni once again. Though the entire battle, I was kinda useless and my team was just knocked out one after another. We likely would have lost had it not been for Gray's Dante here helping us, and eventually we were able to finish off Giovanni's last Pokemon. Both Gray and I ended up with only one Pokemon left at the end of the battle. In true Giovanni fashion, he flees after being defeated and we collected a Master Ball that we never used as our reward. With the city now free of crime, there is nothing standing in our way of gaining our sixth gym badge. Well, except for Sabrina and her dark type team. Umdoom unfortunately fell to Whirlpool and then was quickly avenged by Silvor with Draining Kiss. From there, Silvor wiped through the rest of her team with its fairy moves, including this awesome Spiracuno fusion. With that, we had easily won our sixth gym badge. Now, six gym badges in hand, we are finally able to add the final evolution to our team, Glaceon. Glaceon had some of the coolest fusions in this run, and no, that was not meant to be an ice type joke. One of the best ones was the Starmie fusion that turned into a really pretty snowflake. We also had this Blaziken fusion that looked like Shoto's half hot, half cold from My Hero, and yet I ended up picking this amazing Suicune fusion. I think this design fits so well that I actually would rather this be Suicune's design than its original. I also fused Darkrai with Flareon, Leafeon with Miss Magius, which once again created an amazing witch fusion. I mean, just look at the little Eevee. And then finally, we fused Dragonite with Umbreon. On Cinnabar Island, we challenged Blaine and his dragon type team. And having just added a dragon and ice type to my team, I assumed this would be another easy badge. Oh no. No, it was not. Our first battle did not go very well as this Haxorus fusion outsped my Glaycoon and my Dragorian, but we finally managed to take it down with Darkrion's bite. Then the thick boy Garswine came to ruin my day as well and decimate my Darkrion. Leafeus was then taken out by Sep Knight's Dragon Rush, losing our first battle. I went in eight more times, losing in similar ways as all three of his dragons outsped my Pokemon. On my ninth attempt, we got lucky with some damage rolls and finally made it to his final Pokemon, who we hadn't seen at all until this point. And it was a Dragopee. Perfect. Easy win from here. You are it still outsped and one hit KO'd everything I had left. What is Blaine feeding that caterpillar? After another three battles of being defeated by this caterpillar dragon demon from hell, I came up with a new plan. We leveled up a little bit, added Jolteon back to the team as an Aegislash fusion, and headed in. Now being similar level, our Glaycoon was able to outspeed most of his Pokemon and after a bad switch out for him, we knocked out his Sepnipe as well as Garswine and did massive damage to Dragopee. 
Aegeon then came out and outsped, finishing off Blaine's last two Pokemon and finally winning us our seventh gym badge. On our way out of town, we ran into some rocket goons stealing a boat, and they took off for Mount Ember. Knowing that wherever the grunts went, the leader must be, I followed them determined to put an end to Giovanni's plans once and for all. Once in Mount Ember, I witnessed his master plan. By fusing these three legendary birds together, he was able to create a fusion monster like none other, Zap Mulkuno. If you're new to this game, this fusion has given us a lot of trouble in our past runs. Each head has its own separate health, and each of them get to attack each turn, meaning unless we outspeed, our Pokemon gets hit three times before they get to do anything. This battle is tough, and it was time to see if the Evolution team could handle it. Leading Glaycoon, we used Aurora Beam to weaken the Zapdos head. We then sent in Aegeon, who used Discharge to deal a decent amount of damage to each of them. Luckily, Zapdos and Articuno didn't attack this turn, and Aegeon was able to survive Flamethrower on 1 HP. This allowed us to get off another Discharge and again weaken all three heads before fainting. We even managed to paralyze both Moltres and the Articuno head. Thinking that with the paralysis we would outspeed, I sent in Dragorian and it quickly fainted. Darkrion was then able to come out and get two Lava Plumes off, knocking out the Articuno and burning Zapdos, all because Giovanni decided to use full heals instead of attacking. Giovanni obviously learned nothing from that turn and used a full heal once again as Leafeus used Phantom Force to avoid Moltres' attack. With Zapdos defeated, it was a one-on-one, -on -one, but I was still nervous. Aegeon was still a Steel-type and Moltres was the one on the field. Luckily, it used Air Slash instead of anything else and our Muddy Water didn't miss, making this the first run where we were able to defeat Zap Mulkuno first try. Evolutions are really powerful. Giovanni now truly defeated runs and we chase after him as he's the eighth and final gym leader on this journey. Back at his gym, Giovanni uses ice types. Darkrayon takes out his Smutini and easily defeats Traptor. Electros comes out and with Hypnosis and Lava Plume, we take it out as well. Cloval comes out and almost manages to take us out before fainting and then we fall to Artemis. Aegeon comes in and does some damage and even though they faint, the burn left by Darkrayon finishes him off and earns us our final gym badge. With all eight badges in hand, we headed for the Pokemon League, where Gray, our rival, was waiting, determined to show us that he was in fact not boring. And oh boy, was he right about that! Gray had somehow managed to capture a Palkia Reshiram fusion, and used it to destroy all of my hopes and dreams five times in a row. On our sixth battle, we were able to knock it out using Discharge from Argerion, and then knocked out Namtrio with Sacred Sword. Dragorion used Dragon Tail to continue switching out Gray's Pokemon until it was finally knocked out. Darkrion then finished off his starter, as well as Porither, and finally Glaycoon finished off Untler and Teddy Tomb, winning the battle and finally allowing us to move on to the Pokemon League. Once at the Pokemon League, it was time for more fusions. Like I said, Miss Magius looked so good with so many evolutions, and Umbreon had a ton of good options, like this Ho-Oh and this Rapidash. Aegislash has always made anything look amazing, like this Vaporeon and this Espeon. And Vaporeon and Suicune did look good, but not as good as this Articuno. So elegant. Garchomp and Vaporeon also made this nightmare sea monster. In the end, I decided to keep Leafeon and Miss Magius fused, as well as Jolteon and Aegislash. To bring as many evolutions with us as we could, I tried some double fusions like Umbreon and Vaporeon, which looked amazing. But I decided to go with Flareon and Vaporeon instead. Sylveon ended up being fused with Darkrai because I just absolutely loved the ghostly good witch vibes, and Umbreon fused with Raikou, making the coolest fusion of them all. Okay, not this guy, let's reverse the fusion. There we go. Now that's a powerful looking fusion. Make sure to comment your favorite fusion from the run down below. With our newly formed team, it was finally time to take on the Elite Four. Lorelei was using poison type Pokemon and so it was no real challenge. Her Pedrino went down to an Aurora Beam and eventually Ambium also fell to a Bubble Beam. Egubok also easily fell with an Aurora Beam and after a few Mirror Coats, Squirtan finished itself off. Her final Pokemon, Clefraid, was easy to take down with Bubble Beam after her previous Pokemon had graciously set up the rain for us. And with that, one member down, four to go. Bruno was using normal type Pokemon, and leading Silverai we took out on Urso with Moonblast. We switched into Flayon for the Raticate, who surprised us using Double Edge and knocked us out. Then it barely fell to Umku. 
Silver I came back out to defeat Bicko, and after doing almost nothing to Magpie, we switched into Glacoon to finish it off. Cadelter, being Bruno's final Pokemon, stood no chance, and once again, Bruno proved to be one of the easiest Elite Four members in history. Agatha was up next, and funnily enough, she was randomized back into her original ghost typing. We led Flayon and lost the Battle of Endurance due to the Recover Toxic Spamming Puka Gius. Luckily, Umku then took it out, but then that's where everything fell apart. Sending out her Giratina Raikou fusion to face off against my own Raikou, she quickly tore through my team and sent me right back to the start. After seven times of being defeated by her Giratina, I finally changed some moves on my Pokemon and headed in with a new plan. Leading Umku, we wasted all of her full restores, and then with Leafigus, we finally defeated her first Pokemon. Giratina knocked us out, and my Miracote plan failed due to a high damage roll, leaving Giratina a massive problem we still had to face. We sent in Silver Eye, and surviving on 14 HP, we finally landed a Hypnosis. Then, with a combo of Dream Eater, Bad Dreams, and Nightmare, we are able to finally take it down. We used the same strategy to whittle down her Mega Edge and finished it off with Flayon. Then, Stargar came out and was no match for Bite, so it switched out, and her final Pokemon took us out with Destiny Bond. Our final Pokemon, Aegeon, was able to finish the battle with Discharge finally beating the ghost type master. Our fight with Lance, the rock type elite four member, was definitely the fastest of them all. With Bubble Beam, we took down their Aegisstar, but then Glaikun was quickly defeated by Leaf Storm. Leafigus came out to finish off her second Omastar fusion, and then Aegeon took out Lilac. Cabuckle took a few Iron Heads and flinches to fall, and his final Pokemon, Lilia, was also finished. With the Elite Four finished, it was time for the final battle of the Evolution run. Now, our first battle with Gray did not go very well. I made several bad decisions, like committing to Hypnosis, even though I knew that the final battle allowed Gray to use a ton of full restores. Then he sent out his starter Charsaur, and it didn't matter what I hit it with. The combination of leftovers and its insane bulk made it nearly impossible to actually damage. It eventually wiped out the rest of my team, and I had to make my way all the way back there to go at him once again. This time he led with Cleone and immediately used Minimize, and I started to panic. If he used that move too many times, there'd be almost no way for me to defeat this goofy little Pokemon. Between using Minimize and Metronome, he ended up knocking out my Leafigus with random moves like Mystical Fire. It then managed to all but take out my Glaikun with double slaps, and then Gray switched out. Thank you. We would have definitely lost with a full evasive boost metronoming Pokemon. Umku came out to finish off this Toad and barely did any damage to Charsaur. Luckily, Flayon came in and used Muddy Water, reducing its accuracy enough that we were able to whittle it down and take out his starter. His double Raichu fusion came out and quickly finished us off, but luckily our Steel Electric type was still in the back and didn't have any problems using Sacred Sword to take it out. We then finished off Deli Blim with Discharge, and then Sunium, their second to last Pokemon, came out. After getting a few flinches, we were knocked out, leaving them on 1 HP. The final Pokemon came out, Clefound. Luckily, we put it to sleep first turn, and with Nightmare, Dream Eater, and Bad Dreams, we finished it off, defeating Gray and securing the title of Pokemon Champion using only Evolution Fusions. This run was extremely fun, guys, and we were able to create some amazing Evolution Fusions. If you haven't already, you should definitely go check out our other fusion runs using Grass and Dark type Pokemon. And if you enjoyed, consider subscribing, as barely 1% of my viewers are currently subscribed. Remember to comment down below your favorite fusions of the run, and if you want to see another fusion run, make sure to comment what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and thank you for your support, and until next time, peace.